One of my subscribers informed me under one of my videos about a woman by the name of DeCynthia Clements. Now, I can honestly say that I didn't know anything about this woman. I didn't know what the backstory was because it didn't really make its rounds like it should have, in my opinion, after read, excuse me, after, after reading the bit of information about her in the case that I did. But basically, uh, Cynthia Clements is a 34-year-old woman who was from this place called Elgin, Illinois. And she they basically saying that the woman was suicidal. She basically had mental health issues, actual mental health issues, not saying that they were mentally disturbed because uh, she committed a crime or anything of that nature like they like to throw on to white people every chance they get. And they said she was armed with a state knife and they were trying for an hour to get her out of a vehicle that she had pretty much barricaded herself into. And after several attempts to get her out of the car, they ended up just flat out killing this woman. And now uh, her family is trying to demand answers as to why they had to kill this woman in order to de-escalate the situation. So what I'm going to do is read this article that's coming from CNN. It's a pretty lengthy article, but it contains quite a bit of information. It says, Elgin, Illinois police officers tried for more than an hour to get a woman they believe was suicidal and possibly armed with a state knife out of her car on the side of Interstate 90, including threatening her with arrest. Authorities say she refused, and at one point she set something on fire and threw it into the back seat. As smoke filled the car, police moved toward it to force her out, but she opened the door, choking on the smoke out of the car as three gunshots rang out. Police say she had a knife in her left hand, but it's not clear in the video. The Cynthia Clements, age 34, was killed in her family wants answers. Elgin Police Chief Jeff Swoboda is trying to provide some information with the release Thursday of about 30 hours of video from police body cameras at the scene. It's an effort to be transparent, he said in a news conference. We are trying to lead the way in what a transparent police department looks like. And what a transparent police department looks like is what you get in front of the cameras and you talk to the people before you have all the answers. An attorney for her family told CNN that Clemens was emotionally disturbed and the situation should have been handled differently. The Illinois State Police is leading an investigation into the March 12th shooting. The Cook County State's attorney will review the case when it is completed, but the process is expected to take months. I'm sure that's going to give them enough time to come up with some kind of story to fit their narrative. The police department will also conduct an internal investigation to determine whether its policies were properly followed. Now, see how they deal with a black person who was mentally or emotionally disturbed versus how they deal with a white person who they claim is mo emotionally or mentally disturbed. If that was a white person that hopped out of that, that burning, that smoked up car, they would have let them charge at them and then they would have took them in. Refer to the story that I just did about the guy in Kentucky. In the footage, police are seen trying to get Clemens to exit her vehicle, which is stopped on the shoulder of I-90 in Elgin, about 40 miles west of Chicago. She periodically tries to drive away, but her car is missing two tires and can be heard scraping against the pavement. As more officers arrive, one tells them he saw Clemens with a state knife and a white powdery substance on her hand, which she assumes to be crack cocaine. Officers discuss strategies to get Clemens, whom they believe to be suicidal, out of the car. They repeatedly tell her she is under arrest, but she refuses to get out. Eventually, police close to the interstate close the interstate as a safety precaution. Police continues to talk tactics. One officer says if Clemens exits the vehicle with the knife, they will try to stop her. But if she has the knife to herself, he says, we're not going to end it for her. Officers discuss using multiple methods of non-lethal force, including tasers and rubber bullets. At this point, Swoboda said police have spent an hour on I-90 trying to get her out of the car. Officers pin Clements' vehicle between two squad cars in an attempt to keep her from leaving, but a sense of urgency takes over after she lights something on fire and throws it into the backseat of her vehicle, which begins filling with smoke. When a fire erupts inside the vehicle, officers decide to extract her from the car. One can be seen removing his taser from its holster before several officers approach. From the body camera, the car door can be seen opening, and Clements is heard choking on smoke, billowing out of the top of the car. Officers tell her to exit the vehicle and Clemens steps out and moves toward the officers where one of them fires his weapon three times. Police say she was holding a knife. 
Antonio Ramanucci, an attorney for Clemens family, told CNN in an interview Friday that police had no reason to open fire. There was no evidence that police were in fear for their own bodily harm. Adding, and it's clear in the video, that officers saw she was clearly emotionally disturbed. Ramanucci believes the situation should have been handled differently and that a crisis intervention team should have been on the scene. Since they did not deal with this as a medical situation, they dealt with it as a militarized police situation because one officer perceived her as a deadly threat despite the plan not to kill her. With all those officers there, it was predetermined that she would die. Swoboda said in a Thursday news conference that one of the officers on the scene led the department's hostage negotiation team until recently and that a high percentage of Elgin police officers have crisis intervention training. Well, if that's the case, then why didn't any of them use that so-called training? I'll tell you why, because there was a lie. None of them probably had that training. And if they did, they didn't get trained long enough. So Boda said his department wanted to begin the healing process and chose to release the video now, though he recognized it will initially cause more pain for the family. In cases like this, though, that also forced some tough conversations. And I want the community to know that the Elgin Police Department is ready to have those tough conversations. First off, let me just offer my condolences to the family uh, for their loss. I wish I had known about this story uh, sooner. It said that she got killed on March 12th. And I think that was right around the time all that stuff with the Austin bomber was happening. They didn't release the video until like a couple weeks later. That's when the whole Stefan Clark thing was happening. So it was like her story got buried underneath a lot of things. It's like when it comes to stories with black people, it's almost like they can only focus on one story per. But if this was a white person, oh, they'll be making sure that they cover everything. No matter if it's five tragedies happening in that one week span. But when it comes to us, ours can be um, happen once per week, but then they'll only focus on that one out of maybe three tragedies that occurred. Now, like I said, this is a true uh, testament of how they deal with black people versus how they deal with white people when it comes to quote unquote mental illnesses. A black person can actually be suffering some from some kind of mental disturbance for real and actually be diagnosed with something and have the actual papers to prove it. But a white person, they don't have any kind of documentation to prove that they're mentally ill. They just say it because somehow white people are just in the wrong frame of mind whenever they do whatever it is that they do. And black people are in their right frame of mind when, it, when they do whatever it is that they do. I mean, any woman who would throw something into the back seat of her car and set it on fire while holding a quote-unquote state knife, which I don't even know she had that, and sets her own car on fire while she's in it and still in without the uh, attempt of being suicidal because they said she was suicidal, but she's still fighting to get out of her car even after she does it, has to have some kind of mental disability. Because if she was really suicidal, she would have just sat there in the seat and just let herself burn. But she fought to get out, so she probably did it but then realized what was she doing. But see, we'll never know now because she's dead. And they even said that they didn't want to use any kind of deadly force on the woman. But they, whoever backup came, they must have not have gotten the memo. And they just shot her three times. And now she's dead. I would want answers too. See, they don't know how to deal with black people for some strange reason when they have a mental illness. Shoot, they don't really know how to deal with black people, period. They only know how to deal with black people in one way and one way only. And that's with deadly force. It's the same song and dance, the same story over and over again. Wash, rinse, repeat. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments.